Hi guys, uh, Satpanda here for a new episode of uh, a casual game review. I know I said I wouldn't do much of them, but there's a lot of good games that came out recently, so I decided to make another one about that phenomenon that is Eleanor. Can you see it? Fantastic, you can even see my camera. Uh, first, I wasn't interested at all in the game. I wasn't going to buy it, but it was my birthday recently and someone offered it to me, so I said, Yay, karma bitch slapped me. So I decided to try it. And my impressions are not very good. Let me explain on that. Uh, first off, I wasn't expecting anything from this game because I just read like one review of it on a French website and they gave it like uh, 18 out of 20, which is really good. So I decided to make my own view on it. And the thing is, I'm going to first talk about the good aspects of the game. Uh, what saved the game for me was the immersion, the atmosphere, and of course the the facial motions, which is incredible. I mean, it's a step forward in animation, and I hope that uh, a lot of the game will use that because it was really impressive. That's something I really like, especially when it's a game you have to interrogate people. Uh, and see if they are lying or not. I mean, it was a brilliant idea and the facial animation is fantastic. And the actors, because it's real actors of course, all the actors are really good and it's what uh, sold the game for me. Because they contribute a lot, the voice acting and the actor presence is really good, it makes the immersion better. But the game is basically crippled with a lot, a lot, a lot of problems. And the first one are basically what all Rockstar games, because it's Rockstar and Tim Bundy that you can see, but it's behind. Tim Bundy, first game, I think, or second game. Uh, so it, it got the main Rockstar problem, which are the controls and the camera, because when you walk, uh, they will... I, I can't even remember how many times I was stuck in a wall during a gunfight because the camera decided I was in a door frame and decided to look at something else instead of the two guys who were shooting bullets through me, though. So it was a little bit annoying. And uh, it moves around pretty weirdly. And the car chase are... Uh, the car chase are impossible. Well, not impossible, but really annoying because your car is so heavy. And some things that buggers my mind are also that it's not a Rockstar problem, but the game is really easy. I mean, I beat it because I wanted to know about the story, because apparently it's really uh, a lot like the movie LA Confidential. I don't know I never saw that movie, but uh, I really wanted to know the end of the story just because the actors were really good. So I had more an impression of watching a good noir movie than playing a game because First I said the walking, uh, the controls are horrible, the car chase are horrible and it was even more baffling that the game realized that the, the, the controls are not good because let's say you have to, uh, if you want a perfect ranking because it's the only reward you get, it's perfect ranking, 5 star out of 5. You have to find all the clues, it's pretty easy, you just have to walk around and your control shakes, so you find all the clues pretty easily. You have to get all the questions in interrogatory correct, and there's a lot of tricks you can find to resolve that. And then there's the car cheese, uh, chase, car cheese, car chase, uh, and tailing suspects or fight and stuff like that. And the thing is, if you screw that up too much, the games tell you, if you find that too difficult, we can skip it, but it will not affect your final score. Which is basically a way of the game to give up. Because the control of the car and walking around and trying to follow a suspect without being noticed are so horrible that the game knows it and tells you, it's okay, you can skip it. It's not very good, it makes the game so easy because technically you can never lose. The only time you can lose is... No, no, not even. I was going to, to say on a gunfight, because you can die. But if you die three times, the games tell you, never mind, skip it. Not affect your score. That's not very challenging, because if I know I'm not going to fail, I got no purpose on playing it at the game. It's only really the stories that made me play it, and it's 
not a good selling point, I believe. And another thing, you can have like find all the clues, uh, interrogate all the suspects correctly. Never mind the the chase scene and the gunfight, but. If you make some silly damage, like you run around in your car and you control so bad that most of the time you will bump on other car or even civilians, you will have uh, damage to pay at the end and that will lower your score. Like if you eat a lamppost, you will have to pay like 30 bucks of damage and it lower your score. And then the game give up again because if you hold Y next to a car, your teammate will drive the car for you and make it safe. And after the third mission, I did that. And basically, I was five-starring every mission. So it's not really challenging. And even if you miss all the questions, let's say you find a suspect that is really hard to spot on when he's lying or not, and, and, you, and you miss, and you don't get the information you need, like an address or something, the game again will tell you, maybe you should follow that guy. And then you follow the guy, and he leads you to the address you needed to know. So that's... For me, it was a huge problem because it was so frustrating to to know that you couldn't lose. And, and also, the last point was some of the interrogatory were really weird. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Yad's example because I saw his review and I agree with, with that on him. The interrogatory are really weird because it got the alpha protocol system choice. And for me, it was weirder when, let's say, a suspect didn't seem to be saying the truth, but I know I couldn't prove they were lying, so you have the doubt option. But the thing is, Cole works with his own logic. Let's say I had a question, and I was going to say, I'm doubting what you say, but then Cole will bring up some things that I w didn't have in mind and make the question or my own process of logic completely moot. And I was like, ah! So I used the Yadzi game tip. Basically, uh, go for the Dr. House approach. Everybody is lying. Uh, if they're not, you can back out. You will just apologize and you can do that without losing any game points. Again, Eleanor is a good game for his atmosphere, for his storyline. It's interesting, and you want to know, I mean, the, the, all the surroundings are pretty good, the actors are good, but as a game, not that good, and that not really innovative, because if you think about it, there was other games who did that, like basic adventure games, or Under a Killing Moon, um, I can't remember the name, but the, Basically, like 20 years ago, there were games like that. This one is just an easy version. It's like my first uh, detective game. Now, should I recommend it? I mean, yes. Uh, the thing is, I mean, you have to try this game just for the atmosphere and the face motions, but not at full price. You know, I, I can say I enjoyed the game, but mainly because I didn't pay for it. It was a present. But I think it was like 65 euros. Uh, my final advice would be try this game, but not at full price. I mean, rent it or uh, just wait for it, for, for the price to go down a little. I, I mean, you, maybe you will have like a month or a few weeks to, to wait. Good experience, not a good game. That's all I want to say. And before the haters get angry at me, I, I clearly said I enjoyed playing that, but there is, there are a lot of frustrating things that make it not a really good game as itself. Good experience, not a good game. That's my final words.